Okay, welcome to the review session that is on protein synthesis. Uh, this is correlating to your book on chapter 17, I believe this is. Um, okay, so the whole way that your body pretty much makes you you uh, is turning the code of DNA into protein. So the process is simply DNA to RNA to protein. And this is considered the central dogma of biology. Um, the idea is your body has fail-safes. We want to keep this information as safe and protected as possible because if the blueprint ever gets destroyed, uh, we can no longer make these proteins at the end. So your body keeps DNA in the nucleus for the most part, right? Unless that nucleus dissolves in order to divide and make new cells in mitosis or meiosis. Um, and what we do is we make a copy of the information of DNA into RNA, specifically mRNA, and then that becomes a messenger to then in turn translate into protein. So this process right here, this first one is called transcription, and then the second arrow is translation. And we're just going to kind of run over uh, exactly what we've talked about in class with this process. We'll first talk about transcription and how that's done, and then we'll talk about translation. And that should be good enough for Chapter 17. And then uh, I would think that once we get to the uh, second part, basically, of this section, which would be the DNA technology connection to DNA and RNA, uh, we'll talk about all the other different types of RNAs that are out there that are more recently discovered and how they they connect to a lot of the dif different types of drugs and medications that we're looking at to solve a lot of the problems that we have uh, that or that humans have been plagued with over the years. All right, so first part is transcription. Uh, with transcription, the idea is to make RNA, uh, but the difference is when you're looking at a eukaryote versus a prokaryote, Eukaryotes have these sections of this RNA that are considered um, unimportant pieces, uh, and those would be your introns, right? So the initiating spot will be right here at this promoter region of the DNA. And if you remember us talking in class, that promoter region is a repeat of T's and A's and T's and A's, also known as the ta-ta box. And that will allow for a promoting region um, of a different complex of different proteins to attach there, which signals in RNA polymerase to come in and attach to the DNA. And in a five prime, three prime fashion, will make the uh, pre mRNA that you're seeing right here. Um, and that pre mRNA, like I said, has introns and exons in it. It has a leader section and a trailer section and poly A tail and a five prime cap. And we'll talk about all those different things in a second here. Uh, but the big thing is that pre-mRNA is unfinished. If you're looking at a prokaryote, there is none of these introns. So the RNA polymerase will just make the coded section. It's all exon. There's no introns. And then translate that into the protein that's needed at the ribosome. Uh, this will pose a problem when we talk about DNA tech that scientists had to try to figure out how could we use these small, simple organisms that we would like to have as factories, yet still use the genes of eukaryotes uh, in the process? So we're going to have to try to figure out a way to fix that. And scientists have come up with a way more recently that will eliminate that issue. All right, so we have introns in there, and we have exons in there. And as you can see, there's this RNA processing that happens and with RNA processing, we get all those different acronyms that came up in class, like SNRPs and whatnot. Um, and that's small nuclear RNA. And if you work with small nuclear RNA and small nuclear ribonuclear proteins, small nuclear ribonuclear proteins, these two things together pretty much make this cutting entity um, that is an enzyme, but it's not made out of protein. It's an RNA-based type of enzyme and it's called a spliceosome. And the spliceosome will cut out those introns and leave just the protein coding sequence is all made out of exons. Those exons are then the pieces that 
our ribosome and our tRNA and all those other pieces that we'll talk about here in a second in translation will then turn into viable polypeptide chain that can do its two-dimensional conformation, its tertiary conformation, and its uh, quaternary quant conformation to make the functional protein that we need. All right, so that's that first part here. This is all transcription. So basically RNA polymerase attaching to that promoter region, making the pre-mRNA, and then once that pre-mRNA is made, we're going to cut out those introns using spliceosomes, and we are left with the post-mRNA or functional mRNA that is going to then leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome. So all this process right here that I've just been talking about, basically from here on up, all this is done in the nucleus where the DNA is stored because we want to protect that DNA. So if that DNA leaves the nucleus, there's a lot of free radicals out in the cellular cytoplasm, um, and those free radicals can damage the DNA. And like I said, if we damage that DNA, we can't make any viable protein after that. So we're going to keep the DNA in the nucleus. We're just going to make copies. So if that mRNA gets destroyed out in the cytoplasm, we can always make a new copy uh, doing transcription again. But all this transcription process is done in the nucleus, and then we're going to allow this mRNA here uh, with this 5' prime cap and the poly A tail to be able to get out of the nucleus through those nuclear pores and head out to the cytoplasm and, more specifically, the ribosome. So this 5' prime cap, we should talk about this, and the poly A tail, what they're going to do is mostly protect our important stuff um, in our mRNA. So if there are free radicals, it's only going to really attack those ends. So the 5' prime cap and the poly A tail serve as uh, buffers uh, to protect the important information, which is that protein coding sequence. Uh, the 5' prime cap will also allow uh, for a lot of the attachment of some of the things that we won't really talk about in this class that allow for translation to begin at the ribosome. So those things are important not only for protection, but all for, also for the initiation of translation. All right, let's move on. So here is showing you the whole process in the bigger picture. Right, so we have the transcription happening in the nucleus. Right, we have RNA nucleotides. Those are the pieces. And then we have RNA polymerase. Remember, it attaches at that ta-ta box or the promoter region of DNA. It then makes the mRNA. This would be pre-mRNA, and then you're going to have to have uh, spliceosomes come in and cut out those introns, only if it's an eukaryote. Uh, but if it's not a eukaryote, there would be no nucleus, so this would all be done in the cytoplasm. And then that post-mRNA, or that viable mRNA, will then leave the nuclear membrane, or the nucleus, through the nuclear membrane, nuclear pores, and then head out to what you see here, the ribosome. And that's where we're going to do the next piece, which is translation. So translation. Uh, first part, as you kind of can see here, this is uh, not exactly the best image, I apologize. Uh, but this is the initiation. So there's three steps to translation. There's initiation, elongation, and termination. Uh, and just like they sound, initiation, we're just initiating the process. Termination, we're terminating the process. And elongation, we're making the polypeptide, our goal, longer and longer. So what you're seeing here, the first piece, mRNA is going to come out. We're going to have this first, basically, tRNA attach to that first start codon, which is always going to be this um, AUG sequence. Um, and that first tRNA connects, so this is, that right there is a tRNA, and this is a amino acid here, that first amino acid is going to attach to this tRNA, uh, is going to attach to this first codon, and once that happens, then we're going to have some subunits of the ribosome attached together. So we're going to have the small subunit come in first on the bottom, and then the top subunit drops in, and we'll notice that the ribosome actually has three sites. It has E, P, and A. Uh, a would be the first, P would be the second, and E would be the third. So it's kind of ape is basically what's going on here. A is going to stand for attach. P is going to stand for polypeptide because that's where the polypeptide is going to grow. And then E is going to stand for exit. So the first, as you can see here, the first tRNA actually attaches at the P site 
right? And then the next tRNA that's going to come in, as I'll show you in the next image, is going to come into the A site because it's going to attach. The polypeptides are then going to grow and grow and grow at this P site. And what happens is these tRNAs are just transfer RNAs, so they're going to be just transferring in the amino acids, and that polypeptide chain is going to get longer and longer and longer. And when it gets to the E, there's going to be a tRNA over here, but there's going to be no amino acid on that tRNA. So here is a uh, picture continuation or a timeline of what's going on here. So we have the P site. That first one came in. So here's step one, right, kind of the, the initiation. And then our next one comes in to the A site. As you can see, A site. This next tRNA comes in here. Notice it has an anticodon that matches up with the codon on RNA. And notice that RNA doesn't have Ts, and instead it has Us. So you're going to have this anticodon bind up with the codon, and it's going to bring in the respective amino acids. So that's what the circle is. So that's proline that's coming in. Uh, it matches up with that CCG. And uh, if you remember in class, you're going to have to be able to use that big, huge chart to figure out uh, the universal code of what mRNA sequence codes for what amino acids. There will be maybe one or two questions on the final, and there will probably be one or two questions on the AP test, uh, if I could guess correctly, um, on your ability to be able to use that chart. Uh, and then the next one, as you can see, so the uh, first amino acid and the second amino acid peptide bond together. Right Now this one's empty. So this becomes the E site, and we continue on. As you can see, here comes the next one, and then the next one, right? So we get all kinds of ones coming in. The polypeptide's growing at the P site. The E always has the empty tRNA, and then there's going to be the A site where the next one's going to come in. All right, so let's kind of see this in a flow fashion. I'll try to do my best here. So here in the green is mRNA. Uh, the blue squigglies, I kind of made them in a T type of shape if you squint your eyes. That's the tRNA. And then you've got the red things, so it's, that's the ribosome. And keep in mind the ribosome is made out of rRNA. So the first piece here, we have this already pre-cut uh, mRNA, so it has no introns. It's all exons. Remember we did that RNA splicing or that RNA processing in the nucleus. So now first piece here, we have AUG, which is going to be the start sequence. So once this comes in, the first tRNA is going to attach and it's going to be bringing the first amino acid, right? So that first amino acid is going to be methionine, which I don't think you need to memorize. You just need to know that how this first part works. So this is initiation. So that first tRNA binds in, the small subunit attaches, the big subunit attaches, and now we are ready to start RNA. Um, to protein production, right? So we're basically doing translation. So that first one comes in. This will be the P site then. And this isn't going to move as much as I want it to move. So there's the P site. The second one then comes in with the anticodon that matches the codon. And that'll be the A site. It brings in an amino acid at the same time. So now we've got two amino acids. We're going to see, as the hippies talked about, peptide bond and there's going to be a peptide bond that forms between them the p then is going to get bigger this one slides over it's called indexing so the whole ribosome kind of shifts down when we do this the polypeptide's growing this one leaves the e site the next tRNA comes in it brings an amino acid and as you can see it's going to start getting bigger this tRNA on the other hand is completely free. It can go pick up another amino acid if it needs to. Uh, but then we do another peptide bond, right? And it indexes down. And now this one's empty. It can continue on. And you can see the polypeptide is starting to grow out of the top of the ribosome. The next tRNA comes into the next codon. It brings its own amino acid, peptide bond. We index down. This one's now free to leave. It can go get another one, and you can see that the polypeptide is growing. Uh, the last piece then is termination. So what happens is if we hit a codon that matches termination, it's really not going to code for a tRNA that has anything. It's just going to code for a tRNA that comes in uh, that matches that stop codon, and it just causes this whole thing to fall apart. And so now all you're left with is this functional protein right here 
and then all the pieces can go back to what they were doing before, which is probably floating around in the cytoplasm. Uh, and that is protein synthesis from start to finish. So uh, keep in mind the entire process in the big picture here, right? We're trying to make proteins. Uh, and remember all the way back from the beginning of the year, proteins are one of the most versatile components that are found in your body. Uh, but one of the biggest things is that they function as enzymes. And remember that their proteins have a four-dimensional conformation primary, which is that polypeptide chain that we just made. Secondary, we're going to have some of those alpha helixes and beta pleated sheets where it starts folding in upon itself. Tertiary structure where we start getting some more stronger bonds like disulfide bridges and ionic bonds. And then finally, we're going to have multiple polypeptides interacting to make that quaternary structure. And we get that very specific shape, and that very specific shape defines its very specific, very specific function. Uh, and that is chapter 17. Good luck.